What can brands do if they really want to support a social cause? Marketers need to be thoughtful about how to make a positive impact if we don't want to come across as tone deaf. Today, we're going to share three big tools for building social enterprises that are sure to help you change the world for the better. The, the kind of main way to, or the easiest way to think about innovation is really, you know, like, how are you building for the user? Not for your assumptions on the user, not for, um, you know, the ideas that you came up with, like, oh my God, I'm gonna do this idea, but it's really going back to the user, understanding their needs, their experiences, what they're going through, and designing a solution for them. In this episode of Growing Brands, you'll learn about how to build a powerful social enterprise by developing a strong brand framework, creating a process for innovation, and learning to co-create with your customers. Plus, our guest is a senior creative strategy and design research consultant, Michelle Arascaita, who's going to share three very important branding concepts for social enterprises that will make you much more user-focused as a marketer. So what does it take to be a social enterprise? No, having social media accounts and tweeting your political beliefs doesn't quite count. Although the real definition is a bit broad, the Social Enterprise Alliance uses the following definition. Social enterprises are organizations that address a basic unmet need or solve a social or environmental problem through a market-driven approach. From what we've seen, there are three major concepts that can amplify the impact of a social enterprise. The first is brand frameworks. Frameworks help brands know who their customers really are and what the brand is supposed to do for them. The second is innovation as a process. True innovation simply means solving problems for consumers better than we're doing today and can be learned by building more user-centered practices into every part of the business. And third, co-creation. Once brands learn to focus on customers, they can start to co-create with them. The more people that participate, the bigger the potential for advancing the cause. Get one or all three wrong and you may come across as tone deaf. Get them all right and you could potentially change the world. If you want to make sure you're proverbially giving the world a Coke and not a Pepsi, you're going to need a plan. For that, we reached out to Michelle Arascaita, a senior creative strategy and design research consultant and member of Badassery. This is what she said. Okay, so you are running a social enterprise and you need to put together a brand strategy. What are some of the top considerations that you mm. should be thinking about? Yeah, so the way I define and describe brand strategy is understanding how an organization wants to define itself, who the organization is, what you stand for, and how you communicate that. Um, there's lots of brand strategy or strategy that comes out with campaigns and marketing and all of that, but let's think about this from a higher level and really think about this as who you are as an organization and what makes you distinct. And so when you're thinking about developing that, whether you're a new startup or you've you know, been around for 10 years or 20 years and you need a little bit of a refresh, there's three things to really think about in, in, the, in that process. So one is looking inward, the second is looking outward, and the third is looking at your data. So looking inward is really about reflecting on who you are as an organization, you know, talking to your stakeholders, talking to your founders, and figuring out why did you start this organization? What is it that you believe in? You know, there's, there's a difference between what you value and what you believe in. And I definitely lean more towards in the believe in space because you can value transparency, but what you believe in and your point of view on that is what's going to make you distinct. And the second, looking outward. You know, I just said, oh, well, like you don't want to mimic anyone else. So then why do you need to look outward? But looking outward allows you and helps you to reflect on who you are and how you're different than your competitors. Um, looking outward also allows you to see how they communicate. What's the status quo in the market? You know, what are people saying a lot? What are some of the things that maybe are common but actually aren't that clear? So how can you clarify some of those things and get really clear on who you are by seeing what your competitors are doing and not doing? And then the last is looking at your data, which what I mean by that is really understanding your audience. So, you know, how do you look at your data to see who's buying right now? to figure out what's going on and in your business, but then you know, wanting to have conversations and doing a little bit more qualitative research so you can understand why those things are happening. And if you can start to understand why those things are happening, it helps you understand your users on a deeper level, their mindsets, their values, and their needs. 
And that's important because you want to make sure when you're designing this brand strategy and you look inward and you look outward and you're like, okay, this is the space that we play in. You want to make sure that resonates with your users. And so resonating in terms of, you know, communications, but also in terms of what, what the services you're providing and the product you're creating. Like how, how do you make sure that is actually serving their needs? Innovation is often seen as maybe serendipitous or not intentional. How can social enterprises create programs uh, that innovate with real purpose? Yeah, yeah, I love this question. I, I, I love um, getting that question because my perspective is innovation is not serendipitous at all. It is, it is not a matter of luck. It is very much a practice. Um, you know, it, this practice is really about helping an organization understand how to um, channel the creative minds that are in everybody. Everybody has a creative, you know, spirit and creative ways of thinking. But it's really how do you channel that creativity to solve problems for the organization, whether it's problems that are holding you back from growth, problems that are um, about the future, like where could we go? Like it can be any sort of business problem, but it's really about helping you figure out how to do that. And there are a bunch of different methods out there. There's different names and different processes, but the, the kind of main way to, or the easiest way to think about innovation is really, you know, like, how are you building for the user? Not for your assumptions on the user, not for, um, you know, the ideas that you came up with, like, oh my God, I'm going to do this idea. But it's really going back to the user, understanding their needs, their experiences, what they're going through, and designing a solution for them. So it's really taking us out of the, out of the picture and focusing on uh, the user and the audience and really designing for them, because that will allow you to, to be able to create solutions that solve those problems because you're addressing the problem. Yeah, I like that. So um, it almost ends up being a process of co-creation with your users, and which is a really powerful tool in, in, a, mm -hmm. in a sense. How can this co-creation help um, consumers and brands tackle complex or culturally taboo issues together? Yeah, I love that question too because I am a big fan of tackling complex or taboo problems because I think this is the type of that's the type of work that can actually make an impact on the world and on society and on culture the way I think about it is co-creation is bringing your audience into your process not just interviewing them and getting the insights and then walking away and saying okay we can figure this out as a team co-creation is bringing them along the entire process interviewing them getting them into the ideation session brainstorming with them because they're gonna have insights from their lived experience. They're gonna have insight into some implicit biases that we have. And they're gonna be able to say, oh, that doesn't really sit well with me because it, you're, it communicates this thing. And you're like, oh, I hadn't thought about it that way before. And so it, it really will, will open your eyes to their experiences and their points of view. And also gives them a sense of ownership as you go out or go through the process, like building and testing with them. They're more likely to use it if, if you have their voice baked into the, the product and the service. So I really think um, being able to have that perspective is so crucial when tackling things that are very sensitive, tackling things that um, have a stigma. So being able to think about people with a sense and a lens of humanity and not being able to, um, or being able to spot the biases that we have is like a really, really crucial and big benefit and value of co-creation. Um, so, so that's like one of the reasons why I'm super excited by the space and being able for or being able to implement that. Sure. Sure. No, that's, uh, it sounds like you can really solve some problems that maybe you wouldn't be able to do alone, which is uh, an important part of uh, uh, tackling social uh, issues. That is perfect information for those that are watching. Michelle, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, I appreciate you having me on today. If you like this episode, then take a few seconds to follow or subscribe to this channel, or head over to branddata.com to download our branding tips checklist for social enterprises. Okay, it's your turn. What social causes are most important to your brand? How are you leveraging your brand framework, innovation, and co-creation to make the biggest impact? Let me know by leaving a comment real quick before you go. Is it recording? Should you, bleh, oh boy. Just be, sh bleh, mixed mess. Why can't I say that? Flank steaks. Oh, you script thingy. Would you go back in time and make sure that I didn't say it that way? Thank you.